Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. I hope you're all having a really fantastic day thus far. And so I want to say a big thank you, by the way, to all of you who sent birthday wishes uh, in the comment section of my previous update video. I really appreciate them and I try to respond to all of them. And uh, now we got to get into what's happening across the tropics. So the first tropical wave of the 2023 season has emerged. And so uh, we're going to be taking a look at it as well as what is happening across the Caribbean and the rainfall expected because, of course, uh, that continuous activity is still pretty much there across sections of the Caribbean. And so we'll be taking a look at all of that. And so before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the notification bell so that you never miss an important update. Okay, so first things first, we are taking a look at the general view of the North Atlantic. We're looking at infrared satellite here. And uh, down to the coast of Africa, there we can see some of that activity in association with that first tropical wave of the season. And of course, they propagate towards the west. And uh, this is the breeding ground for most tropical cyclones throughout the hurricane season. They develop from tropical waves that make their way off Africa and, of course, in the presence of the conducive environmental conditions they sometimes develop and so i'm not expecting much from this first one here i mean if it manages to reach the caribbean maybe with some activity still in association with it it might induce some showers and thunderstorms across some areas but of course we're talking about uh something in the long term i mean this just emerged from africa so over the next several days it will continue to make its way across the uh, tropical atlantic and so as I said, I'm not expecting much from this in terms of any sorts of development. And uh, normally, we see so many of these tropical waves come off Africa each year, but only a very small percentage of that number actually manage to develop into tropical cyclones. But of course, sometimes they might contain so much activity that results in continuous rainfall and maybe flooding in some areas. So sometimes it doesn't even take a tropical cyclone to uh, do some damage to some areas. So we'll keep tracking that for you guys and so now let's go ahead and take a look at what is happening as we drift closer to the caribbean we can see that there is so much activity taking place across some areas uh looking in the northern caribbean we still have that induced activity lots of moisture in the region right now helping to favor the development of those uh showers and thunderstorms and so this is likely resulting in some um it may be some early morning showers or just some overcast conditions stretching as far as uh in the vicinity of the yucatan near the coast uh the cayman islands cuba jamaica hispaniola the southern bahamas and turks and caicos islands so uh, this is likely resulting in some activity and as a matter of fact these areas or some of these areas rather are expected to receive quite a bit of rainfall today and uh, i'll be taking you guys through the rainfall maps very shortly but uh looking over in the east specifically Specifically for the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico, we can see that there isn't much happening at the moment. Maybe some passing clouds at the most. Uh, the Lesser Antilles, uh, similar story. We're seeing some cloud cover for some areas, but not seeing a whole lot of activity being uh, prevalent within the area. Going down to the ABC Islands, not seeing much happening either. Mainly just some cloud cover, and uh, that might induce maybe a brief shower or so within the area. But uh, going to the Southern Caribbean, we see lots of convective activity. Look at those uh, white dots now those indicate lightning strikes a lot of thunderstorm activity taking place across some areas mainly the southern central american territories and also going into colombia and then for venezuela we also see some activity across some areas and then guyana and suriname seem to have some activity going on in the south uh some of that is dissipating but for french guiana things are looking a bit on the sunnier side maybe with some overcast conditions at times so that is what is happening in terms of uh uh, the Caribbean and surrounding areas, of course. And now we're going to be looking at what the rainfall maps have to show, after which we'll be taking a look at the latest for the Saharan dust to see where that plume of dust is, is any in the Caribbean right now. And then finally, we'll be going on to what the GFS and Euro are showing in terms of uh, potential development of the southeastern coast of the US. Uh, we're going to be starting out with GFS. And so as it becomes more colorful, those are much higher totals 
expected. And so uh, looking at this map here, we can see that the GFS is expecting rainfall throughout most of the Northern Caribbean, going to the Southern Central American territories and for most of Northern South America, of course. So we see some of those higher totals in some areas such as Colombia, as well as Hispaniola. So uh, in the event of heavy rainfall, guys, there can always be flooding. So please take all necessary precautions and stay safe. But uh, unfortunately for the Lesser Antilles, including Barbados and Trinidad and Tobago, and also going down to the ABC Islands, we're not seeing where much rainfall activity is likely throughout today. And so uh, looking at the icon model, icon is pretty much in agreement with this. We're not showing as much rainfall for some areas compared to the GFS, but still the same general uh, expectation here in terms of the east not receiving much rainfall and most of that activity occurring across most of the northern uh, Caribbean, including islands such as Cuba, Hispaniola, of course, Jamaica, and even the Cayman Islands and going down south to uh, the southern Central American territories. And the euro is expecting something uh, similar closer to what the icon is expecting an activity across uh the northern caribbean as well as going down to uh, sections of central america and most of northern south america uh, including colombia venezuela brazil guyana Suriname, french guiana uh some substantial rainfall occurring in some areas as well so that is what the models are expecting in terms of the rainfall activity and so what about the saharan dust so the dust is kind of at bay in the caribbean and of course, as we head more to those shades of oranges, reds, and even that pink shade, those are indicating more abundant Saharan dust. And so uh, we can see that for the Caribbean, there is very little dust in the region. And so as a result of that uh, dry air not being so dominant, we have all of this moisture resulting in the rainfall we are receiving, which we're very grateful for, by the way, because of course, in the presence of dry air, we don't really have much development in terms of convective activity. And so so finally, development of the southeastern coast of the U.S. So now we're going to be looking at what the GFS and Euro have to show. We're starting out with the GFS. And so uh, if you watched yesterday's update video, you would have seen where I highlighted the fact that GFS was expecting something off the southeastern coast of the U.S. And now today we're not seeing where the model is expecting a strong system. Uh, and by the way, this is for the uh, the end of this week, going to Friday on the 19th of May here. And uh, the these black lines that you're seeing are called isobars and they represent or join areas of equal pressure. And so when we see them in a circular manner, when they're enclosed with a pressure of at least 10, 13 millibars or lower, that is a low pressure system. Uh, and they sometimes can be tropical cyclones. And those colors we're seeing, those greens, yellows, oranges, represent the average precipitation rate in millimeters per hour. There we have that key over to the right side of your screen uh, with those different shades and the values beside them. And so, uh, not seeing where GFS is expecting anything major now and going on to the euro model we can see that the euro is showing that area of showers not expecting that we're going to be seeing any major development and even on the national hurricane centers a uh, graphical tropical weather outlook that we're not seeing where anything is highlighted as of now but of course it is not impossible because uh during the early part of the season we typically look for those fronts exiting the u.s and the tail end rem are remaining behind with some moisture and developing into uh tropical or subtropical cyclones so not impossible at all but as for the immediate future i don't really see that happening guys and so uh that is what is taking place and of course i'll be keeping you guys updated as time goes by and so i hope that you found this video to be quite informative however if you have any questions feel free to leave them down in the comments i'll try to respond as best and as soon as i can and of course remember to always be with wise